For 2021, Volkswagen came out with their ID4. It was a rear wheel drive platform and it was an all electric car. Well, sales have been brisk and they're actually getting very close to beating Tesla, which was their ultimate goal. But now they've got the ID4, which is all wheel drive, which is now finally available. This is the Pro S top trim level with the gradient package, which includes the 20 inch wheels. So we're gonna show you all of the features together. We're also gonna give you some information on the ID4 across the board so that when you go to buy one of these cars you're thinking about looking at at least an electric vehicle, you'll have some information. You can make a decision that works for you. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. This is the 2021 Volkswagen ID4. Now we cover more than car reviews and first looks at new vehicles. We give you car smart. So don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get started with looking at this vehicle. Now I've got the LED headlights on because I want you to see some of the coolest features of this vehicle. First off, the illuminated Volkswagen logo. I love it. This is the new logo. The illuminated bar across the front. This is on all ID4s as well as LED headlights. And you can see these daytime running lights. Really, really cool. And if you take a closer look at it, you can see that the headlight itself is almost a honeycomb type of look. Really thought about the details on this vehicle. If you look at this car, you see that it looks like a car. Of course it is one, but Tesla unfortunately looks like a Dementor. If you're a Harry Potter fan, it's just completely faceless. Volkswagen has gone out of their way to make this look like it's part of the Volkswagen family. We're gonna see that also with the ID bus, which will be coming out very soon. Now, how do you tell if this vehicle is an, an all wheel drive? It's a Pro S. Well, there's really only one way to tell. The way to find out if if your ID for that you're either test driving or somebody owns or that you own is to look right here, whether it's a first edition, an all wheel drive Pro S or just an all wheel drive Pro. Our test vehicle is running on the 20 inch alloy wheels. Now this is going to reduce your range. So it's important to note that if you're in it for the distance between charges, you probably don't wanna jump up to the gradient package, which includes a black roof and silver roof rails and these 20 inch tires that run on 235 50R20. Those are like performance tires. And that's great if you want the performance aspect of an electric car, but it does kill the range by about 50 miles. And that's important to note when you make your decision. Looking down the sides, you can see those silver roof rails. This looks exactly like the ID4, which we've reviewed in the past. We had a first edition. This is the top of the line all wheel drive Pro S, like I was saying. If by chance this vehicle runs out of juice or something happens and you can't get in or out of the car, you can. Volkswagen has thought about that and you can lift this door handle up just like you would a regular door handle and it will unlock the door. You're basically forcing the door open. So underneath here is a little pad that just needs a little bit of a touch and the door opens. Pretty simple. Okay, just good important things to note if you purchase a vehicle like this. There's a lot of matte black down here, keeping this car looking clean, even in our Buffalo winters. I do love the silver here. The gloss black follows itself to the inside. Remember, gloss black on the outside is fine. Gloss black on the inside, picks up your fingerprints. Under the hood of the ID4 all-wheel drive Pro S is a second motor. Now there is no front trunk because Volkswagen did not design it that way. However, mixing that front motor with the rear motor, you get 295 horsepower, 339 pound-feet of torque, and it is backed by a single speed automatic transmission. There's 82 kilowatts of power with the dual motor, only 77 of it is usable. The range on the Pro S all wheel drive is 240 miles. If you go to the Just ID4 Pro, it's 249 miles. Remember, the all wheel drive system does lower your range. There's three different ways to charge this battery, and that is one you could use a wall outlet, which takes around 14 hours. I tried it, it takes forever. You can use a level two charger, which you should be able to get just about anywhere. I checked with my local uh, Volkswagen dealer. They had a charging port outside. They told me it ranges anywhere between 10 and $100. I was kind of shocked. Hopefully that's not the case and they were giving me disinformation, but it's good for you to do your homework before you go and purchase an electric vehicle. And then of course you get that fast charging if it's available in your area. You want to check Electrify America does come with this vehicle at no charge. It's not available in my area, but that is something that it's important to note. Towing capacity is 2,700 pounds. That's 500 pounds greater than the rear wheel drive system. So how do you start this vehicle? Well, when you sit in the seat with a key fob with you, either in your pocket or in your hand, 
it instantly knows and everything lights up. You get your center screen the way you would like it. You get the gauges in front of you and the vehicle will drive. So the security is you don't want to leave your key laying around because anyone would have full access just like they would to any car. So one of the things that I find interesting is this lever here. This is your shifter lever. And when you move the steering wheel up and down, it goes with you. And again, you can adjust that according to whatever you like. Going forward is drive, going backwards is reverse, and there's a neutral obviously as well. The park button is right here at the end. Pretty intuitive, easy to use. You do get used to that pretty quickly. Zero to 60 time is 5.3 seconds in the sport mode. So we go to zero and here we go. Throws you back in the seat. 5.3 seconds is not rocket ship fast, but it is fast for an SUV, faster than its equivalent in gasoline powered but you're not going to be using it that often. You're not going to be launching it from zero to 60. And when you do, all you do is kill the life of the battery. So if the intention is to have an electric vehicle where you don't need to purchase gas and you don't have to charge a lot, then you obviously don't want to be leaving it in the sport mode all the time, but it does make it more fun to drive. Now there are other drive modes. If you go over here, you've got the eco mode, which is going to give you the most regenerative brakes and there's front disc and rear drum. Now the fuel economy, if you wanna compare this to other electric vehicles, is 93 MPGE. Obviously it's not miles per gallon, but it, the E means it's electric. So if you're gonna compare this to an EV6 or a, a Volvo XC40 recharge, a Mach-E, whatever it might be, you wanna make sure that you know what that MPGE number is so it knows how many miles essentially per gallon. I hate to use the per gallon, but that's what the government uses. So we will continue with their language. Now, as far as handling this vehicle is not as inspiring and exciting as a Golf GTI or the R for that model even. And that's kind of sad because I really love the Golf and I love what Volkswagen is about handling and fun and sporty. And this is more utilitarian more family oriented. Uh, it is an SUV. I mean, so you have to kind of think of it that way. Although they do have Tiguans, which are certainly more inspiring if you buy an R. There is no one pedal drive on this vehicle, which a lot of electric vehicles have. And in addition, you do get three years of Electrify America included with the vehicle, which I think is very helpful because a lot of people don't want to pay for the charging and it can get expensive and it's important that you check in your area because where we live there is no fast charging. The one thing to note is the all-wheel drive version of the ID4 is about 0.6 inches taller. That's the only way you can really tell the difference of this and the logo on the outside because the vehicle is pretty much the same but it weighs 4,888 pounds. That's a heavy vehicle which means you're going to put more abuse on the tires, more downward weight, tires are being propelled means the tires are going to wear out quicker than they would on a gasoline version. It's just important to know these little details in your head. Now when it comes to the regenerative brake, there are front disc brakes for that, but the rear brakes are drum brakes. And as someone who's been in the brake business my whole entire life, that's part of where my engineering background comes from, I'm really not a fan of drum brakes. They don't work great in the rain, they're not as reliable as disc brakes, and that's why really no one has them unless you're looking to cut some corners on a budget, which might be the real truth behind it, even though Volkswagen says it's lighter. I don't believe that, but if that's what they want to say, then we'll go with it for now. You make your own determination. The interior is very quiet in this car, and I think that's really important. And there is a confidence behind the wheel of this vehicle because of all the safety features that are included that make this vehicle easy to drive. I'm not a big fan personally of the active steering. I shut that off immediately. I personally don't care for it. If you want it on, you should be able to have it. But the fact is everything's pretty easy to use. It's still a little wonky, but they can update that software at any time. So the 22 might have an upgrade to the software based on the feedback from all the journalists who have said, why do I have to go three layers deep to access something? So you shouldn't have that. But I think this is a vehicle in progress. They're selling a ton of them. They are likely to outsell Tesla in the Model Y category. So I have a slow person driving in front of me. That was smooth and seamless. Put this vehicle into sport mode and it goes the moment you step on the pedal. And that's true with any electric vehicle. You're gonna get instant acceleration. 
And that's the positive of the electric cars. The negative for me is the charging time and the cost of insurance. And there's still expenses because nothing in life is free. Anything with moving parts means you're going to have to have maintenance. So there's no way of getting around that. Even though there's less moving parts, there's still moving parts. So we'll go back to a, a more comfort mode here. You don't want to use up all the juice. It's very easy to do that. And when you do, then you find yourself getting a little stressed. We don't want to have range anxiety. And you typically wouldn't have that. We still have 83% of the charge to 100. We're doing really well considering I've been pushing this vehicle all day long, kind of seeing what it'll do. And I do have a Blink charger available for uh, this vehicle if we do need to plug in. Uh, and that's something that Blink has provided to uh, automotive journalists, certain ones, to uh, let us experience their product. And it's been excellent. So if you're thinking about a charger for your home, check out Blink, just like it, B-L-I-N-K. Super easy to find. You can order it online. Easy, easy to install. My overall experience with the ID4 all-wheel drive has been pretty good. Uh, the cold weather has been its enemy. Um, but as far as handling in the snow, you put it in the all-wheel drive mode, it did just as good as any other car with a similar type tire. If you're looking for better fuel economy, don't get the gradient package because that will lower your fuel economy or your mileage per charge. When it comes to safety, you can find that information here underneath the assist button that's just below that main screen. And when you turn on the vehicle, everything resets itself so that you can set it up however you want. I find that a little bit frustrating. For example, when you come close to it, you press that. That is the active lane keeping assist, which pushes you back into the lane. There's also a steering wheel vibration. I'm gonna shut that off personally, but you can go back to the screen and see what each of these things do. So this is your forward collision warning. You can set it up how you want that as well. And then this is the vehicle in front of you. So this is your adaptive cruise control. So it can set that up very close, however you want. That's how I like it. It's that racing pass. You also have the traffic sign recognition, uh, which is standard with it, as well as the speed alert. So all the safety and technology features come standard. And that includes all the advanced driver assistance technology. And that's helpful, including blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and the backup camera. When I put it into reverse, you will see you get that. That's the Buick that I'm going to be reviewing next. It is a Buick Enclave, in case you're interested. Uh, but this is exactly what you get. You do not get an around view camera. You get a backup camera with lines, and these are just park assist areas. Good to know that this is standard, and I do appreciate that, although pretty much all the EV companies are adding that as a standard because the last thing you want is an accident. There's also uh, a hum that happens with the vehicle when you put it in reverse, and that's also standard by government regulation. The second row has a ton of room and some creative storage, such as a little pocket here directly behind the seats on both sides. There is storage down here as well and storage in the door. Lots of shiny black, which I find concerning because if you've got little kids, it means you're going to be cleaning your interior a lot. The seats are pretty comfortable, though they are flat and they are long enough. So if you have an adult back here, it'll be fine, but you should have anyone who sits back here on a regular basis, check that out. In the center, there is two cup holders in the armrest, but pretty much this is a very basic setup, but there is a flat floor, which is really nice when you gotta put kids stuff with you. When it comes to technology, there's nothing different on the different trim lines. This is the same technology, it's a little bit wonky. You have to go a few steps to get to different things. And this is really important as a smart infotainment system. So besides that, you've got your phone, your radio, your navigation, your vehicle information, your app connect, the sound, ambient lighting, and then of course your help. This is the mixture of, of the different information. You can change that however you want. You can go into the vehicle as you need to. Again, you can adjust that, customize that screen. This will give you some charging information. What's left in the closest one around you is about 87% charge left. The cold weather has been kind of brutal on this. You can add your current charging location your vehicle information. I think this is really nicely done. Exterior lights, mirrors, headlights. This is a nice little feature in technology that I think is great because this makes it easy for people to understand. Easy open, you can set that or not. So then you can also go to your interior. It'll show you the interior information that you will need. So all this information is great. It's here, it's part of features. It's something that people want. Further down, you've got your temperature settings. It's very sensitive. You touch that, you can adjust your temperatures. 
your volume is a slide, and that's the passenger side. Then you've got your modes here. When you press the mode button, it shows you eco, comfort, sport, traction, which is your all-wheel drive, and your custom modes. As you change the modes, it changes the picture. This is nothing unusual these days. It started with Lincoln, and now everybody and their brother is making these part of the imagery. Further down below the screen, you've got your menu button you can press. That's for your park assist, your climate control, which has the heated steering wheel and the heated seats for both sides. And there's massaging seats, by the way, and memory seats for both sides. So that is massive plus for this car. Not every brand has that. You can also change the air care if you wish. I mean, there's a lot of neat little things in this car that uh, we covered in the ID4 review. You can check that out. This is the safety systems, then your different modes. Further down, you've just got ventilation, tons of places for storage, and this comes out, by the way. This is your cup holder. It does remove if you don't want the cup holder, but it also has a place for charging your key. Everything is well thought out, and you can put that back in there if that's what you prefer. Wireless charging, tons of USB-C charging ports. There is customizable spacing here for your center console. You can put that in any way you want. Further back, you've got two more USB-C ports as well as the ventilation. When you come around to the back of the vehicle, it looks exactly like any other ID4 with the new logo, which I do like in white and the LED lights running all the way across the back. They've done a really nice job making this vehicle stand out in the crowd. And that's probably why they've been picking up more sales. The ID4 here is in white. I like that. It's very clean. And if you go all the way down here, you can see there's a little class two hitch. Maybe it's more like a class one, just a little teeny square in case you got to haul bicycles or something light. You're only going to get a 2,700 pound towing capacity. Like I said, it's a little bit more than that of the rear wheel drive, but if that's what your needs are, at least you know you can haul something. When you open the hatch of this vehicle, you have about 30.4 cubic feet of storage, 60-40 split seats, and a pass-through for skis because it's a German car and people like to ski up that way. But if you got to haul anything long, at least you know you have that capability. Now, because there is no front trunk, you do have 60 cubic feet of storage with the seats down. Also underneath here, there is more storage and then there's a hidden storage underneath that as well. The one thing that does come with this vehicle is a charger. Now I use this as a wall charger, but if you're going to a fast charging station, there's a connection there as well. And that connection port is here on the right side, just like a gas tank. So it's very intuitive. There's more storage in this vehicle in comparison to a Mach-E or a Tesla. But when you compare the EV6 or the Ionic 5, they have more storage than this vehicle. So you're probably thinking, well, what about the warranty on this car? Well, you get the four years 50,000 mile warranty, but the battery is good for eight years, 100,000 miles, and that could save you a lot of money, as well as the two year, 20,000 mile maintenance plan, which comes with this. Now, don't think there's no maintenance when it comes to an electric vehicle. There are still moving parts. If there's moving parts, maintenance will be needed at some point. So there's no way to escape that. I know a lot of people think about it. Also, don't forget to check the insurance rates. Typically, it's higher on electric vehicles than that of a gasoline power or a plug-in hybrid. So do your homework before you make a decision. When you're talking about the pricing of this vehicle, it starts at about $45,000. You add in the goodies, and our test vehicle was over $50,000. That is right in the sweet spot of the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6, and even the Mach-E, when you load them up to be comparable, the Tesla is also in that price range. You're looking at a Model Y. So where's the benefit? Well, the benefit is you have a dealer network with Volkswagen as the other brands. Tesla, you would have to send it off to a different location. So it's good that you do your homework before you make that final decision. So when you're talking about the pricing of this car and will you be saving money over a gasoline powered car? Well, that's where you need to do the homework. You will need a charging station at your house, which is highly recommended if you do not have a garage. That could be a challenge for you. You need to figure that out as well. And when you think the average person keeps these for six years, you have to do the math. It may not make sense for you. It might be a great solution for you. But the goal is, is that you have options. And if this doesn't work for you, you can look at the Volkswagen Tiguan. It's about the same size. And that's really good information to know. We've reviewed this car as well as the EV6, the Ionic 5, the Mach-E. We've reviewed all the cars. And there are more vehicles coming out in this category. It's become very, very popular. There's a lot of interest in should I buy an electric vehicle we drove this vehicle for about a week the one negative that I did find is I drove it on a five mile trip 
and I lost 20 miles of range. So it's really important that you think about the temperatures and the climates that you live in before you make a final decision. So for me, it doesn't make sense. I live in cold Buffalo, but if you live in the middle of the country, you live in a warmer climate, it might make sense for you. Remember, super warm temperatures like Arizona in the middle of the desert, you're gonna have that same impact to any battery that you would with severe cold. So both of those two things can be an impact to the battery life. Just some things of food for thought, some car smarts, as they say. If you got value from this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If I didn't answer your question, there's a lot here and I could go on for like two hours. I'd rather have you ask your questions in the comments down below. Let's open the conversation. We have a great community of people that always comment and we love to get your feedback, positive, negative. Did you buy one? Did you not? What did you buy? We'd be curious if you bought another brand, if you bought an ID4 and you love it, we would love to hear that as well. And of course, check out our podcast, Total Car Score. We did talk to some people at Volkswagen about the ID4. You can check that out on all platforms. It's called Total Car Score. Our website, carcoachreports.com in English and in Spanish. And we appreciate your support on our social media everywhere at Lauren Fix and also on our Patreon page. Thanks so much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.